Welcome to the MSQL Tips webcast, Gain a competitive, ed com competitive Edge with Data Analytics, sponsored by Tejail Systems. I'm Greg Robdu, co-founder of MSQL Tips and today's webcast host. Joining me today is Naraj Tanani and Sumit Bansal. Naraj is the CEO and co-founder of NetWoven, which is a Microsoft Gold partner that provides solutions for business productivity, business engagement, infrastructure services, and big data analytics. And Sumit has been the resident SQL Server and database expert at several top flash companies, including Tejile. And his database experience involves extensive hands-on work with database performance, application acceleration, and systems administration. Today they, today, they will both share their experiences on how to use data analytics to your advantage. Before we get started, if you have questions, you can submit them at any time during the webcast by answering your questions in the question area in your presentation controls. And we'll try to answer as many questions as possible during today's webcast. Also, if you have technical issues with sound or screen quality during the webcast, use the question area to let us know. If you're not already a member of the MSQL Tips community, we invite you to join. You can go to www.mssqltips.com, sign up for our newsletter, read any of our tips, download white papers, watch videos, and post your SQL Server questions to be answered by our community members. This webcast will be recorded and archived for future playback, and you'll receive a follow-up email with links after today's event. As an added bonus, Tejile is giving away a Surface 3, and the winner will be selected after the webcast, and you'll be contacted by a Tejile representative. So at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Sumit, and they can begin. Um, thank you, Greg, and uh, good morning, everyone. So welcome, and uh, thanks for your time. Uh, this is a brief look at the agenda. Uh, you know, we'll talk about the speaker, the guest speaker we have from NetVone. Um, we will look at the big picture, you know, why big data and why analytics and why now. Uh, we will look into some of the challenges and solutions that customers are finding uh, for, for their big data uh, issues. Um, you know, we will briefly uh, go into how Tejal is helping the world um, take the load of this uh, big data and analytics world. And then we will have Neeraj uh, go into some concrete advice on how you can create your own um, center of excellence for data analytics. So, Neeraj, you know, welcome and thanks again. Um, I think our audience would love to know more about you. You know, Great. what have you been doing? Thanks, Amit, and thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me on the on the event today. Um, just uh, as a background on myself, I'm, I'm the co-founder and CEO of NetWoven. Been running the company for about 15 years. Uh, I've held executive positions at uh, Microsoft, Accenture, Oracle, and GlaxoSmithKline in my uh, life before NetWoven. I also worked with several industries, uh, in, uh, companies in various industries such as healthcare, financial services, internet software, retailers. I, I think uh, the list goes on and on there. And the interesting part is that the main, when I founded NetWoven, the main focus had been around analytics with structured and unstructured data. It's good to see that come to fruition in the last few years. So I'm pretty excited about you know what the future holds. Um, I've been a frequent speaker in many industry events, and I advise clients on strategizing around uh, digital transformation. So that's a little bit about myself. Oh, very good. I'm glad you're here. I think our audience has a lot to learn uh, from you. Um, now, your current company is NetWoven, and you're in the business of data. So tell me a little bit about your company. Sure. So uh, NetWoven is a, is a company focused on enterprise information management. You know, with all the, 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 the increase in data and analytics, you know, this is an exciting time for a company like ours. And I'll touch upon you know many key points in in the in the subsequent slides. Um, you know we specialize, as I mentioned, both in structured and unstructured data. Uh, we are a Microsoft Gold partner. You know, pretty exciting to see Microsoft evolve in the last uh, few years. You know, evolving their entire platform. So pretty excited to, to be part of that. And then we work with customers both in Fortune 1000 and the mid market space. Excellent. Very good. Excellent there. So, you know, before we get on with the with the meat of stuff, I think it will help to understand why are we talk, even talking about this. I mean, you know, I have worked in this industry for the past 16 years, and 
I've been dealing with data warehouses and uh, reporting and analytics. But why ha why has this become the, the buzzword of the day? Why is it necessary? And you know, so help us understand the necessity and the shape of the world as it is today. Sure, sure. Uh, that's a good good question, uh, Sumit. So you know what you're seeing on on the slide here is not new information. You know we all are dealing with this information, whether it is messaging, it is you know social media content, you know blog posts, uh, the data that we are collecting about you know uh, uh, about people and about products and about solutions. I mean it's the information is not new, but the volume of information at the rate at which it has been growing is I think what makes it unique, interesting and challenging. I mean some data points that you know there's 8 billion mobile devices by 2016. Uh, there's some, some interesting uh, industry t statistics in that area. I mean that really means again a lot of people connected and uh, providing or data that needs to be processed and harnessed. So there's 50 billion interconnected devices you know you may have heard this term IOT which is the Internet of Things you know uh, that by 2020 you know, we we will have about 50 billion of those devices. So what all that really means is lots of data and lots of interesting things to look for in the data, and that's what makes this this very interesting. Oh, good to know. Uh, good to know. And uh, you know, just as a means of example, um, so Tejal in fact has a customer. Uh, they are the mashups, and they are into pig farming business. And um, basically, they track over 5 million piglets from the time that they are born till the time that they are shipped to the consumer That's for, great. For, for consumption. Yeah. And it is not just that they are tracking 5 million piglets, but they are using special sensors and a special way to measure things and they are tracking those, each of those piglets every single day of their life. That's the, the, there's so many examples exist, and I think we'll touch upon some uh, down the uh, in the future slides as well. But you know, Netwoven we work with uh, uh, wine companies, and it's very interesting to see how the wine creation business is, is evolving. You know, you have the farm where you know people are growing grapes, or, or companies are going growing grapes, and now people are uh, companies are collecting data like you know the soil moisture the temperature of the environment, you know, the amount of water that needs to be put in or has been put in, and taking all of that to do some interesting analytics to predict harvesting even better. So there is many interesting things going on with this, you know, with, uh, with, with this interconnected world. So you know, I, I thought that this would be a very interesting and uh, a slide to share, uh, you know, or information to share. Uh, you know, you may have heard of uh, an author, uh, Jeffrey Moore, you know, from uh, author of Crossing the Chasm. Uh, he is, you know, he he made a very interesting point about you know that that how the whole rewiring of the planet is happening, you know, and a new communication and collaboration sort of environment is getting set up. You know, we see our children. Are uh, you know our uh, sort of uh, younger generation today utilizing all these different devices? And I know that sometimes I'm kind of uh, trying to figure out you know why and how they are communicating. But there is a really a new nervous system that is being created here, you know, to uh, to really uh, form the basis of the next line of communication. And you know some statistics that you you may have heard and you might find interesting is you know over 90 percent of the world's data was created in the past two years. I mean, think about it. That, that you know, if we go back two years back, uh, you know, the volume of data that existed is nowhere near to what we've had in two years. Okay, today's data centers occupy an area of land equal in size to almost 6,000 football fields. That's the huge data, a huge space, and and this is only going to increase. I mean, if you go to Oregon and other places, all you see is just farms of data centers, you know, being there. Uh, you know, every minute we're sending 204 emails, million emails. You know, that's you know 278,000 tweets that get sent out. I think you know this is not really new information, probably for people you know on the phone here. But just you know to see the magnitude of it and what it really means is 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 really what I we I think is interesting. And uh, as I interact with my customers and prospects, 
you know, they get amazed in, in terms of, you know, what the volume of information they're dealing with. And they, you know, they appreciate the fact that we're able to bring together a set of know-how and, and techniques in, in, in working with this data. So this is interesting, Neeraj. What this is telling me is that if I were to get up right now, go to the kitchen to grab a glass of water, by the time I come back, the world has changed completely. That's right. I mean, this tells me that possibly, quite possibly, more than petabytes of data has been generated. You're, you're absolutely correct. You know, I think the, the, the every minute or every second counts and, and in terms of, you know, people getting added to the network, people generating data, and what to do with that is, is really interesting. So uh, I, I thought that this might be of interest as well in, in terms of you know the how uh, the, the the change that we are all going through. So and what it really means. So not only we are collecting data, but if you look at the number of companies that have the lifespan of companies that has changed over the last few years. I mean, if you if you went back to the 90, 1920s, you know the average lifespan of a of a company was about 67 years. In the 1980s, you know, this was about 25 years, and now in the 2010, you know, you're looking at average lifespan of a company for about 15 years. And this was, you know, the, you know, a research that was done by a professor at Yale University, you know, as he was trying to to find this, you know, this, the, the overall the change that's happening. So if you look at companies like Uber, companies like, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, um, even like Amazon, these are not really that old companies, these are like 15, 20 year old companies. And I think that, that the expectation is that with all this interconnectedness, you know, this pace is only going to increase. So as, as practitioners, you know, we have to figure out what's going to happen with our careers, you know, how do we keep ourselves current? And second is, what, what do we need to do as companies to be current and, and stay relevant? Um, you know, if you think about it, there's a very interesting, you know, what's causing all this? You know, one could argue that, okay, it's, a, it's the data that's causing all this. And somebody could argue that, you know, it's really, really, uh, if you will, this interconnectedness that's happening. But, but what's, uh, what's really happening is uh, a time-space market compression. What's really time-space market compression? It's these three parameters, the, the, the way the technologies are impacting, we are, time is reducing, the space is reducing, you know, no longer, you know, whether you are in India or, or USA or Europe, you know, that space is irrelevant in terms of doing business. And then the market sizes are just, you know, compressing as well. So all this is what's bringing very interesting dynamics to the, to the world, you know, and, and to what we do. And uh, we've got to sort of act accordingly to, to respond to, if you will, these challenges and opportunities. So with all the data that's getting collected, with all the compression that's getting, uh, that's happening, with all, you know, the, the shrinking, if you will, that's happening on, in the longevity of enterprises, so there's some interesting statistics that, you know, have been found by, by various industry analysts that, you know, companies that are using analytics are five times more likely to make faster decisions and survive. So it's a combination. I think now making better decision is not just a, a, a sort of a nice to have. It's required to for survival purposes. So as people collect more data, you know, we've got to kind of move to the next level of, of uh, decision making and actions from that. And, and you know, this reminds me because uh, I, I work with several of our customers and we have, uh, many of them are online retailers. Um, and um, you know, uh, let's just take an example of somebody who's selling clothes. Um, you know, they, they are setting up promotions and discounts on a daily basis. And gone are the days when they were happy with figuring out what happened during the past 24 hours. Right. As they launch, as they're launching these promotions and discounts, they want to know by the minute, you know, what is happening. And the reason why they want to know that is because they want to be able to course correct right in the middle of a promotion or right in the middle of a of some sort of a discount offering um, so that they don't end up losing millions of dollars in the span of hours. That's exactly right. I think the pace of change, the innovation, 
all of this is driving you know faster decision making for people on the phone you know who are you know probably down in the trenches you know whether you're a database administrator or a database developer or even a decision maker i think what it really means for you all is that you all have to figure out you know what uh, you know how not only to deal with technology but also to to understand data and the business better so these are are really really critical skills to develop you know as you're progressing in this new world Uh, yeah, another statistics that uh, that is a thought share uh, sharing is is that you know there's about 1.6 trillion business value that is ca captured by companies who are using data properly okay so if you're a, you know whether you are a construction company whether you are a uh, you know a, a a law firm whether you are a a um, you know a, a healthcare company whether you are a um, you know, a, um, a service provider, whatever you you know you may be, the relevant the, the important part is to consider data as a strategic asset and to figure out what to do with it and how to do with it. So 1.6 trillion in additional value has been captured. 10% of organizations are expected to have a high profit profitable business units for productizing and commercializing their data. This is sort of you know so data is no longer just a a a, um, a, a bits and bytes. It's actually a, a strategic asset. You know, it's you know it's the battlefield that you are working in. You know, it's the information, if you will, dominance is important with you know getting access to the data. And the real winners will be people who harness the value from data. So I think you guys are in the best position here on the phone. You know, in, in the webinar here to really take your skills. You know, apply it to the next level and become, you know, the if you will, the data czars or the new term that they if they use today is the data scientists. I think this is this is our age. You know, I, I've been a DBA myself in my prior life. You know, when I when I started uh, from college and I've myself evolved into you know running a successful business here. And I've always found helpful going back to my my roots of being a, a database administrator or even you know a data warehouse designer and 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 harnessing that value out of what I've done. That's awesome, David. I mean these these figures are really quite mind boggling. I mean what this is telling me if they were able to realize one point six trillion dollars worth of value just by looking at the data, that means that was money that was being left on the table. That's correct. Otherwise. That's absolutely right, Sumit. There is, uh, you know, as this as this evolution is happening, you know, the new, as I mentioned, the new nervous system getting created. You know, data being a strategic asset. I, I think we're in a very, very good position to take advantage of it, improve our skills. You know, I, I think it will add more uh, stress or to people like us. But at the same time, I think the opportunity in the future is is very bright. Good to know. So this slide is, you know, talks about, you know, how in the past we have, you know, so as we are collecting the data, what we really are transforming ourselves is data is not just about on the business and what we do, but data is becoming the business. So whether you are, you know, I, I was at a conference a couple of days ago and I, I heard about a, uh, a construction company, you know, who, who has actually taken this data that they have collected and they're actually creating a business out of it so more and more companies are looking at how they collect how they make a businesses out of the data they're collecting the data could be collected from you know devices the data could be collected about customers the data could be collected about your supply chain everyone is looking at you know figuring out that how first how we do collect data and second what do we do with it a third is how do we create a business out of, out of it you know, a very good example is, you know, this is a infamous words from the Blockbuster CEO. You know, hopefully for some people on the phone might remember Blockbuster as a company that was a video rental company. If you think about, you know, and the famous quote that, that the CEO there gave was, our business is running retail stores. Well, the look at now, Blockbuster doesn't even exist. I mean, companies like Netflix have taken over from being a retail store to being a digital store. And more and more of this disruption is happening and people on the phone here, people like myself who deal with data, we are in a very unique position to take advantage of this opportunity.
So the, this this sort of goes into the you know next we talk about how the modern BI is changing. So that the past you know what people are I know I've been a data warehousing practitioner for a long time. You know we uh, the the first waves set of waves occurred where we would collect data and provide insights. But now really we have to take it to the next level. Uh, you know for uh, and as we work with companies, we are advise them on you know dealing with the data, uh, getting insights but then using those insights to take actions. I think the actions, companies who are able to take actions on the data and the insight are the ones who will differentiate themselves. So, so Neeraj, you know, um, I think at this, what I would like to ask is, um, if you look at the Microsoft, you know, if you look at the Microsoft platform, what are some of the tools that people are leveraging today in the Microsoft platform that enables them to move towards this modern BI. Microsoft is going through immense change, and the platform that they have come up with is mind-boggling. You know, and and they they have taken a hybrid approach where they have two products and solutions for on-premise, and they have products and solutions on the cloud, and they are integrating that very seamlessly to give a best user experience. So, you know, the, the Microsoft products that, you know, you want to, follow, you know, that, that you want to stay abreast of is, uh, the first and foremost is SQL Server 2016 that just got released a few days ago, or I should say a few weeks ago. And I don't know if you've heard of, of the latest announcement from Microsoft, but SQL Server 2016 is now coming on Linux platform in addition to Windows. So that's a huge change for a company like Microsoft. Another thing that you've got to think, you know, keep abreast of is Azure machine learning. You know, Microsoft Cloud has uh, some Azure machine learning algorithms. They are extremely powerful, and they are, you know, they are able to provide lots of uh, lots of analytical capabilities to your to to you. The third thing you've got to focus on is Cortana Analytics. So some of you may have heard of Siri. You know Cortana, and some of you may have heard of Cortana as well. But Cortana is the sort of the 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 platform, the the question answer platform that Microsoft has, and you know uh, through audio, and it is becoming very very popular, and uh, many many boot camps are happening, you know, around this. So I would urge you to look at that, you know, extensively. And the fourth thing to think uh, to that Microsoft has is the Microsoft Power BI, which is their analytical platform or data visualization platform. And this is the first year when Microsoft actually has been placed in the leaders quadrant of Gartner, you know, using Power BI. So there's only three companies in that leaders quadrant. You know, there's Tableau, Click, and Power BI from Microsoft. So it's very exciting time. You know, the rate of innovation is is interesting, the, and, and, and it's really, really good. You know, uh, I'll give you an example of how we are using the Microsoft Azure BI you know, machine learning with, with a company, you know, and where the data is on premise, but we are using the Azure machine learning algorithm on the cloud to actually analyze and then bring the data back, you know, to, to the local server. This company has collected lots of survey data. You know, so typically when you do surveys, you know, uh, surveys usually have questions, like on a scale of one to five, can you please, you know, respond on how you feel. But then a lot of companies miss out on the text that is written in service. You know, that there is a descriptive field, you might write certain things. So for this hospital, you know, uh, as you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, some of, most of you have gone to a hospital here for a checkup or something, you know, sometimes they give you a survey to fill out, right? And, but, and what we did for a, for a healthcare hospital, a company is to analyze the, the unstructured data or the description that were written out by the patient as they filled out the survey. So for example, you know, there was no question, there wasn't a question in the survey around how good the bathrooms were. But some people wrote in their description saying that, hey, the bathrooms were really dirty. We were able to bring that insight by analyzing the descriptions of survey using this platform. So there's very, very innovative ways in utilizing this new platform. I know there is, you know, stuff happening in the cloud, there's stuff happening on premise. You guys are wondering where to apply a skill. But I think in our belief in talking to the Fortune 1000 companies is that hybrid strategy is going to be the winner. Where you have things on premise and you have things on the cloud and you work, you know, you make them work together. So that's what we are betting as a company and that's what we are advising our customers on. Very good, excellent. 
So let's talk about you know then then you know so, so what as I mentioned that you know the the first wave around for BI and data warehousing practitioners had been on 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 converting data to insights right and now we've got to move the needle towards from data to insights to actions so uh, if the first wave was around static reports if you look at the bottom there you know what happened that's what we used to deal with then we went to interactive reports then now we're moving on to predictions which kind of move more into insights now we are going into recommendations you know uh, i'm sure people on the phone here we all are probably you know, have had a bottle of wine in our in our lives at some point of time. You know, selecting a wine is a very good example of recommendation. Okay, where you know you have you you take your preferences, you take the food you are having, you take the environment you are in, and all that data has to be crunched to come up with a recommendation. You know, that's a very good example of a recommendation engine. You know, we all think you know probably have bought things on Amazon. You know, and and we know what their recommendation engine is like. So this whole area is evolving, and those recommendation engines are what is, are moving people to take certain actions. Great. So uh, now, so just to kind of uh, recap, we we talked about the the evolution of the data that's you know and its impact on the world uh, and on organizations. Then we talked about you know analytics and and its role now i i would like to present a very specific case here of customer engagement and why all of us really need to be thinking about it you know as we become experts in managing data so today uh, it takes literally milliseconds for us who are uh, who are browsing the web to go from one site to another site Okay, and the challenges that the companies face today is how to keep the customer engaged. Because that is the single most important item on getting them engaged so that you can, you know, create a relationship with them and you can actually, they can buy your things and you can have a, a long-term relationship. So this is a very good, interesting, you know, analysis that Forrester Research did back in 2013, where they have classified, you know, how the evolution of the world has, has occurred in the last, uh, you know, few decades. So early in the 1900s, you know, we were in this age of manufacturing, where what was important was mass manufacturing. And that's where, you know, Ford Motor Companies and others of the world, you know, came about. Okay, then we move to age of distribution, where the you know the products were really created you know in in abundance. Now the leaders were companies who were able to distribute it you know uh, seamlessly. So that's where you know companies like Walmart and Toyota and UPS sort of came about. Okay, then we move to age of information, where it's not only about you know the the manufacturing and distribution, but also how we can automate you know how we can you know use information and that led to automation you know in organizations the companies like amazon google and others came about now you know according to forrester we are we have entered this age of customer engagement where the customer will be the king and and how we romance with the customer is going to be critical Okay, and that's what you know. Companies like Macy's, Salesforce, you know, even Microsoft moving into that area, Amazon, USA. These are all the companies that have evolved. So the the, the what I really want to urge or 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 bring to attention for people on the phone here is that as you are you are thinking about your jobs, as you're thinking about data, you know, you might be a DBA, you might be a business analyst, a data analyst. You might be thinking about well, you know, I'm I'm down in the trenches. I'm just dealing with the data. This is the opportunity for you all to elevate your role and, and really bring about, make that interaction with the business, talk about customer engagement and how you should find out what your company is doing to engage the customers, what kinds of data they do need, what kinds of information do they need, what insights do they need, what actions they can take. This is sort of really, if you will, you know, our data geek world. I mean, I'm, I, I, I live and breathe data, so I'm very, very excited about, you know, the opportunities that it brings to, 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 to me. Right, right. And rightfully so. I mean, this ties in very well, um, you know, with the latest announcements from Satya Nadella uh, uh, from Microsoft and Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. And both of them are harping about development of bots. They're investing very heavily on developing these engines 
which are bots. They are essentially artificially intelligent texting machines, essentially. That's correct. So, and, and it is all it is all about customer engagement because they want to they want to grab the customer attention. They want to understand what the customers want. And they want them to keep coming back. That's correct, Sumit. This is, you know, uh, uh, as I was mentioning, I was in, at the Microsoft Envision two weeks ago, and this is uh, is pervasive across all of Microsoft products, technologies. And when we think of bots, you know, you might think that bots are in the cloud, but I would reiterate the fact that the hybrid environment is is where the larger companies are focusing on. You know, they there is there are workloads that they want to keep on premise. And then there are workloads they want to you know stay on the cloud, but they want a seamless integration. I can I can name numerous Fortune 1000 companies. Actually, you'll see the list of companies that we're working with to to you know to to move in this area. So so what what people are calling this is the fourth industrial revolution. So it's a term not coined by me but by Forrester uh, that there, we that we are in this fourth industrial revolution where data is the strategic asset and, and companies and individuals who know how to work with it, who are skilled to deal with it, are the ones who are going to be the winners. Makes sense. So let's then talk about, you know, what does it really mean? Who is this digital customer? You know, and how do we sort of, what are their preferences? What do they need, right? So this is, you know, a digital customer is somebody that expects immediate response. I mean. I don't know about you guys, but I, I have a 21-year-old and a 17-year-old. I have learned to do texting and SMS messaging more so than the, you know in the last five or six years than I ever did. In fact, this is the only way to communicate with my kids today. They don't respond to phone calls. They don't respond to anything other than text messages today. So that's a great way, you know, the social, you know, I get more better responses from my kids when I put in, uh, put a, something on Twitter than actually, you know, sometimes when I even call them and try to reach them or email them. You know, and uh, these, these millennials are expecting information nearly every instant, you know, instantly. There is consumerization. This is a very interesting point. Uh, for some of us who have been in the business to business world, the B2B space, you know, we expect our companies to be very structured with lots of governance, lots of policies, procedures. It is those Fortune 1000 companies that are struggling to actually hire these millennials and they're trying to figure out how to ad adopt or adapt their company to support the millennials. Okay, and that is leading to consumerization of the workspace where, you know, now checking Facebook is no longer a taboo. You know, people see this as something to engage, you know, going to, to going to Twitter is no longer a taboo. I remember during the 90s, you know, when I worked with organizations that when internet came out, a lot of companies would block certain sites, you know, so that users, you know, employees could not access it. I mean, all those walls are falling down and this, you know, and companies are wanted to embrace this digital customer and how to communicate, interact with them. Right. <clears throat> to in order to embrace this, you know, sixty. You know, there's some statistics here that you know that has been collected that about sixty percent of three hundred senior executives who you know who have been interviewed say analyzing digitally derived customer data is key to their innovation. Otherwise, they 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 fear that they will cease to exist and only a small percentage only 15 to 16 percent are believing that they are collecting that and and leveraging this data effectively so for us people with highly skilled database skills you know people on the phone people like myself this is a fantastic opportunity for us to really understand where the technologies are what it can do you know sometimes you have to even advise your business users on what the technology can do because sometimes they're not aware of what technology can do so they're thinking in their own box to say hey I've got this data this is what I want this is your opportunity to say hey you know this is what you want but I could actually do even more for you and here's how I can do it as I see these situations time and time again and I urge you all to take the same approach to your everyday you know scenarios right right and you know, 16%, only 16% believe that they're actually collecting and leveraging this data. So what this means is there is actually a lot of work to be done. And and that is a great opportunity for, you know, people who, who have joined our webinar today because it tells you what 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 should you what should you be working with 
if we want to stay relevant for the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. That's right, Sumit. I mean, I think there is, there is the, you know, we, the, the plane has only hit the runway. It hasn't yet taken off. You know, we've got a long way to go, but, you know, if we are good pilots, we will be able to take this plane to greater heights. So some again, some more you know interesting you know a, a, you know sort of data points in the uh, customer engaged world, right? So some macroeconomic factors that are impacting in this customer. The, the, you know we're becoming more uh, of a service economy. The regulatory environment is increasing. You know increasing pressure. You know with all the European regulations, the U.S. regulations. You know the privacy of the data is is important. You know and then the security. I think all of these are relevant macroeconomic factors that are impacting uh, or, the, or that are uh, required actually for us to tackle as business and technology sort of uh, users. And then from what that does is that it poses certain system needs, you know, to, uh, to make sure that our technology is able to address these macroeconomic needs, you know, and some of these things that are there they are, are something, things like, you know, we, the system needs to be more data driven and intelligent. Sumi talked about the, the bots, you know, that's sort of a step in that direction. You know, making sure that silos don't exist. You know, a lot of times companies think of silos as saying, hey, we've got to bring all the data in one place. That's really not the point. The point is you can have data distributed, but you can have, have an aggregation in that area. You know, you'll hear this term called data virtualization more frequently these days. That's about, uh, you know, bringing all the data virtually together. You know, there is productivity richness that happens through visualization, that happens through interaction. Omnichannel, you know, today if we have to reach the customer, we have to tackle the customer in many different ways by reaching out to the customer. You know, uh, today, you know, the customer, you know, checks their Twitter, they check their Facebook, they check many other devices, they check their phones, many other devices and channels. We've got to figure out how we sort of, uh, you know, uh, cover all of those things. And finally, connected devices. I want to be able to, you know, do some work on the phone, I quickly go to my computer and, and have carry over my experience, then I suddenly want to go home and I'm playing Xbox and I want to have the same experience. So all that connected deviceness becomes important and I can tell you that Microsoft is doing a fantastic job in that area to bring all of these things together. So all you guys on the phone, if you guys, you know, deal with SQL Server and Microsoft Technologies, you know, you should, you know, be paying close attention to their, you know, their uh, 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 sort of technology evolutions. And you can also sign up to Tejail's newsletter as well as Netwoven's newsletter by going to Tejail.com and Netwoven.com because we are also sending information on a regular basis to keep you informed and updated. So, you know, we have, we have spent uh, this wonderful time um, establishing the, the story, you know, where is the world at, why are we here even talking about this, what makes it so exciting and so hot, right? Uh, but now let's come down a level and I think what the audience would benefit from is to, is to you know, get a bit, a bit more intimate look into your customer base and even if you, if you can give us an example of a customer as to, you know, what sort of challenges were they having and how you were able to solve them. Certainly, Sumit. So as I mentioned that, you know, our company has been around for over 15 years and it is, it is formed on the before in, uh, enterprise information management. You know, these are some of the customers that span industries and also geographies and also sizes that we work with. So we worked with companies, of the, the largest companies like Microsoft, Juniper Networks, Applied Material, Medtronic, and then we worked, also worked with mid-sized companies like Kendall Jackson, the Wine Group, uh, you know, and 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 Ritsu and other smaller companies. So we, you know, we we've, we've had the opportunity to work in different segments, and added to that, we've had the benefit of being in the Bay Area, where the technology curve is is uh, is ahead here. We're ahead on the technology curve, and we have been able to actually try out and test out many things. You know, that that uh, I think are very relevant. So one of the customers, you know, that I wanted to talk about was, you know, a large customer in the, you know, who, uh, who are, a, a, who's an online gaming provider, and we did a very interesting project for them, and, and how they are using data analytics. So the business situation where has it this, this customer of ours has over 48 million active users, 
and I can if if you have kids you know maybe 10 to 15 I can guarantee you you would be most likely using their product okay and and there when we got involved the ETL process took over 10 days okay to take the take a daily a data or nightly data and process them uh, them it took over 10 days and then the and then also there were significant poor, you know, risk, poor response time you know that led to bad user experience and delays in decision making so think about this you know lots of data very large volume of data collected you know the processing of the data is taking like 10 plus days and then once the data is processed the end user experience is limited in terms of you know how to analyze the data and how to visualize right so what we were able to do is you know by using you know so if it was if if we were in the world of non flash technology we would have gone and tried to re-architect software, re-architect code, and really beaten it down so that we could have a very creative solution. And we would have spent a, a whole bunch of consulting hours, you know, which is good for us as a company, but we probably would not even have achieved the solution that we, we would have liked to achieve. So, but instead what we did is we ended up using some flash technologies you know that really solved a problem where we just applied the flash technology for for in the ETL platforms we applied the flash technology for the you know analytics platform and the results were that we were able to reduce the ETL time between processing of flash between process between flash technology and software rearchitecture we were able to reduce the processing time from 10 days to 3 to 4 days and significant you know data access performance the uh, if you if you guys use you know microsoft olaf uh, solution the ssas you would be amazed to see how these flash technologies just change the game and the performance so uh, so if you're if you're in that world i would urge you to look at you know tejal's uh, technology in this space and see how it can actually benefit you well thank you Neera. So they, now using the so what is the role of flash technology? As I was mentioning earlier, that you know the tools in our hands in the past was that we would do software reengineering to solve the problem. But but if you combine the software reengineering and the hardware advances, you've got opportunity to create things and do things that you would not even have imagined before. And that's what we are finding. So the things that we are able to solve as a result of software reengineering and hardware advancement is taking advantage, take care of the low latency that we can get, okay, which is a very big issue if you're doing analytics. Silos, you know, you can actually eliminate silos. There are two ways you can eliminate silos. You can eliminate silos by combining your data or you can even have sil data separately and layer it with data virtualization technology that can eliminate your silos. They're easy to use. You know, these, these technologies are easy to use, configure, so it doesn't put a, a lot of burden on you all. And then finally, the agility, because by if, if, you, if users are able to analyze data faster, that means that they're more agile. That's the good news. The bad news is that you're going to get more pressure to, for more data, but that's also a good problem to have, because then there is a, a good circle, you know, that, you know, iterative the circle that's happening where uh, you are giving data to the users, users are analyzing it faster, they are putting more demands on you, and the circle of life keeps moving. So, you know, that is great, Neeraj. I'm glad you, you know, you brought this up. Um, you know, this allows me to sort of take the conversation now a little bit towards more flash. That's you know, Tejal is the, you know, one of the premier providers of uh, flash storage technology for the enterprise. And so I want to spend a few minutes just sharing some basic ideas about how, you know, what, what do we have and what do we do so that we allow, you know, customers like yours and other customers basically, you know, out there um, in, in, in supporting their data analytics strategy, their data analytics environments, and, you know, be competitive in today's environment, right? So, you know, we, you know, we, Basically, Tejal as a company, we believe that, you know, different companies have different needs, you know, and, and so uh, it is it is hard to come come you know come up with a uh, with a with a capacity or with a single solution uh, that fits all. So what we have done is we have actually created this Flash platform where we allow people, customers, to scale, you know, all the way from 
10 terabytes of capacity footprint all the way to 10 petabytes of footprint in a single rack unit. That's amazing. I could just see that with this new, I mean, the customer engagement world and with the data analytics, the focus, how I, you know, customers can utilize this and really gain the speed and efficiency out of it. Right, right. And again, this is not just about capacity because we are also cognizant that, that people need performance. You know, and, and when you, even when you quantify how much performance you need, a month later down the line, you find that you actually need more performance. So, so our technology stack allows you to scale all the way from 50,000 IOPS all the way to 5 million IOPS. And so, so this, is, this is really based on you know, what, is, what the customer project is and what they are trying to accomplish. So to that end, uh, you know, we, we believe that uh, to do great things, companies have to partner. Um, um, and, and so we have partnered with SanDisk and we have created this product called IntelliFlash SD. So that is essentially our flash as a platform, which, uh, and I shared my slide early on, um, you know, it, it, it basically is a platform. So what that means is that you no longer have to create silos. You don't have to spin up different um, you know, arrays for your uh, OLTP processing or for your OLAP processing or even for your virtualized environments, you really get this storage layer and you provision at will for whatever workload that is relevant to you. Right. And this is a great point to, to chime in here. Uh, uh, you know, so far we focused more on the analytics, but for some of you on the phone, if you are supporting a SharePoint environment, for instance, that is running on SQL Server, you know, the, this technology can be utilized for, the, for those environments as well. I've had, uh, my company has had immense success in using flash technologies in, in on-premise SharePoint implementations where, you know, I, we would utilize or recommend to the customer the use of flash technology for the database servers or we would recommend the customer to use the flash technologies for the index server in your SharePoint farm. I mean, these are areas where lots of workloads are kept and they can get significant performance boosts. No, absolutely. So, you know, what makes our, you know, when I mean, flash is flash, you know, there, there are a lot of flash providers, but really what adds the value and makes it useful is the software stack. What is the software that Flash is running on and what are some of the software features that you provide on top of your Flash stack? So, you know, we, we start, so if, if you start from the top, you know, we start with uh, how easy it is to manage. So, you know, we have a very user-friendly web, web interfaces, um, plus we have a very well-developed REST API library. So that way, if people have their own management softwares, it is very easy for them to integrate into our um, into our arrays, um, it is fully integrated with uh, uh, with VMware. So, in other words, you can use your own VM uh, interface, uh, vSphere, and what have you, um, in in terms of managing our um, our Flash. Um, and then, you know, we also you know cloud. Uh, we we also have cloud cloud analytics. So, what that does is it allows us to basically keep a tab. Uh, you know, we can proactively know um, if an array is about to go. Um, into some sort of a negative performance area or if something negative is about to happen and we can proactively advise our customers and take action accordingly. Now the second one is, and this is especially helpful uh, in this age of data proliferation. So this is multiple, you know, pro protocol choice. So our product is actually multiple pro multi protocol capable. So the same array, you can, you can provision some LUNs as, uh, as fiber channel or iSCSI or, and, and at the same time, you can have provision some LUNs as SIF shares or NFS. So in other words, the same box, the, sing, the single box can act both as a SAN and a NAS. And again, today, it is very important because the world is no longer about structured data. It is, it is in fact, more about unstructured data. So you're not just dealing with relational databases, but you're dealing with files. You want to store files. And so this, this ability to, to do multiple protocols out of the same box actually helps to reduce the footprint and consolidate. And, and then, um, you know, you, once, you have, once you have this power, then you need features like data reduction, data protection, 
you know, data security. So we provide encryption at rest and with data reduction, um, you know, we, for a typical workload, obviously it is very workload dependent, whether you are compressing a VDI workload or whether you're compressing a database workload, but our algorithms actually deliver anywhere from one to three to one to five uh, compression ratio. And this again helps in keeping the footprint under control while giving you the performance that you need. Right. Um, so, so all in all, it's a very uh, well-developed platform. Um, you know, it's not just about Flash, just the, the media, but it is the software, uh, you know, that is wrapped around it. And then, um, you know, we, we work with enterprise customers, we, uh, we work with big customers, so we have to make sure that we eliminate your risk. And to that end, you know, we partner with some of the best companies out there. So for example, you know, all of our products are certified with Oracle, with Microsoft, with VMware, and you know, we are certified even with the latest versions. So for example, with SQL Server, we are certified with SQL Server 2014, and then very sure we will be certified with 2016. Um, now on the other side, because you know, we, we believe in using Flash as a platform, and as some of your customers have seen, you want to leverage that benefit as opposed to creating silos. So it made sense for us to partner with companies like Cisco. You know, Cisco, with Cisco and their UCS platform, you know, you can truly create this Flash platform or this flat Flash infrastructure, which is very agile. You can change things very quickly. You can change the profiles very quickly, depending on what you need. You know, within the flick of a few switches, uh, you, you, can, you can take a profile and you can turn it, say, from OLTP to OLAP or, or vice versa. So, so it is very adaptable. And, and, you know, the other thing is because this is pre-bundled, pre-configured, so we take the guesswork um, out uh, for our consumers. So we call it IntelliStack. Essentially, it's a, it's a ready-made product that includes Tejal Flash platform with Cisco UCS plate. And then, you know, this is just a little bit about Tejal. You know, we are, this is, you know, we are not newbies. This is not something that we have just started. Um, you know, we have uh, amazing uh, investors. You know, we have, um, you know, uh, in fact, SanDisk and SGST, they are our investors, Meritech Capital. Uh, Meritech Capital is not only an investor, but actually a customer. So talk about, you know, eating your dog food, right? Um, and, and then, um, and it is the partnerships that we have with companies like SanDisk and GST that allow us to basically make the products very cost effective for our consumers, right? And then, you know, we are, we are recognized very heavily with Gartner and, and other industry experts. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we are growing pretty rapidly. And, um, you know, we, we love to help our customers uh, solve their business problems. So after this, Neeraj, I think now, um, I think our audience can use some concrete advice from you in terms of, I think you've gotten them pretty excited that, you know, this is the world that we are in and this is going to get even more rich with data. So what advice can you give them um, in terms of, um, you know, what is it they can do to take the next, you know, take the next steps? That's a good, good question, Sumit. So, uh, I touched upon, you know, developing skills at a personal level earlier. So, you know, if you're, if you're focused on the Microsoft world, just getting to know the entire Microsoft stack that I mentioned, four things, you know, SQL Server 2016, Power BI, uh, Azure Machine Learning, and Cortana Analytics. I mean, I would, I would be all over these four things to, to get myself updated. Okay, then figuring out the next thing I would do at a personal level is to learn, to to stay abreast on Microsoft's hybrid, uh, if you will, strategy. I think it's it's going to be very very critical. New product lines are coming out. SQL Server 2016 came out just a few weeks ago. Uh, SharePoint 2016 is coming out uh, next week or next few weeks. So there is interesting things happening there. So I would stay abreast of that. Then at the company level, what we are advising larger organizations. You know, and this is probably applicable to more larger organizations, but if you're a mid-sized company, you can also adopt uh, some of these techniques. So what we are advising them is to build a analytics center of excellence. 
So what does that really mean, right? So an analytic center of excellence really means that you take people from different uh, segments of the organization, bring them together under a single umbrella. Okay, so that there is a one place where all uh, all resources can be applied to to make that the the if you will the heart of uh, of heart of the nervous system. Okay, or I, I should say the brain of the nervous system. Okay, and that that center of excellence should have you know know how in several areas. You know, data management, dealing knowing how to deal with large volumes of data, statistical knowledge. You know, I know I had to brush up. On my statistics, you know, I took, the last course I took was in 1995, but I can't tell you how many statistics courses I've taken in the last few years. Uh, machine learning, there is very interesting things happening here. Uh, Microsoft also has a lots of training courses in this area that are free. You know, you can also go to Coursera and 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 have courses. So there are many of them. Visualization, extremely important. Because once you get all of this data, the, the key is to figure out, okay, how do you translate this into visual, you know, uh, sort of causal effects, uh, you know, and, you know, to the users. And then finally, infrastructure and storage. You know, I was a developer very early on and did not focus too much on infrastructure, you know, because I was at the application layer. But as things are moving to the cloud and this hybrid strategy is taking shape, one of the things that I myself and a lot of our 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 clients are looking to do is to have their developers also learn infrastructure and storage because there is lots of innovation happening in this area. So it's a great opportunity for you to to immerse yourself in that space as well. And then you know developing your 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 business expertise is also important. You know. You no longer just can think that you are one of those DBAs or, or SharePoint developers in a corner just working with data. You've got to reach out. You've got to re look at how business is using data, how business can, in how you can actually give some insights to the business users and make that dialogue both uh, interactive rather than one way. And then finally, you know, the last bullet is having an iterative mindset. I grew up from the in the world of you know doing a waterfall model development where every project was three to four months. I mean, in fact, um, uh, you know we used to have this uh, this uh, advice to our customers to deliver everything in in twelve weeks. Okay, but now you know with this iter with this agile nature of things, now we are advising our customers to do to be more iterative and have three, four, five, six week delivery of projects. So try to have a product mindset where you're taking smaller problems, delivering it, getting feedback while you're delivering the next one and get it more interactive because you can be guaranteed that by the time you solve the problem, the problem probably has moved or you have more data to deal with. Uh, that, that was a very helpful advice, Neeraj. I, I hope, I, I'm confident that uh, that our audience will benefit from this immensely. Um, so, you know, we have uh, we have sort of reached the end of our presentation. Uh, once again, I really do thank all of you um, for joining. I hope you found it useful and eye-opening, as I did, to be honest with you. Um, now, you know, in terms of your next steps, strategy, and, and you know, in terms of expert advice. So, we have a few things for you. You know, you can obviously go to tejal.com. Um, we have done a, a Microsoft Tejal Fast Track Data Warehouse Reference Architecture paper. Uh, it's uh, it's available at this link that you see on your screen. Um, and also, and this is this is especially for the audience um, on this webinar. Um, so Netwoven, uh, Neeraj's company, uh, they have uh, agreed to do a complimentary consultation for your data analytics strategy. So I, I strongly urge you to take make use of it. Uh, you know, become the heroes in your organization, become that change, you know, like become the 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 the, the seed for innovation. Um, so so you know feel free to call 18877 netwoven or email info at netwoven.com and uh, you know uh, and netwoven will be happy to work with you on how your company uh, can get an edge um, on your data analytics strategy. You can also visit their website at www.netwoven.com. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Niraj. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep. Thank you, Niraj and Sumit, for sharing all that great information. It was definitely an excellent presentation. Um, I also want to thank Tejal Systems for sponsoring today's event.
the webcast was recorded and everyone will receive a follow-up email with links to view the archive. Also, please visit mssqltips.com to access all of our free SQL Server resources. As mentioned earlier, Tejal is giving away a Surface 3 and the winner will be selected after the webcast and contacted by a Tejal representative. Once again, I'm Greg Rabadu from MS SQL Tips. Thank you for attending and have a great day.